It's a very interesting question, Living Pathways. I think it's come over the last two to three years where the Institute realized that we need to do something to complement the bank's skill set and we have to improve certain skill areas within the banks that's become highly specialized. So if you look at a bank, you will have treasury areas, you'll have risk and compliance, you'll have credit, you'll have financial planning, and you'll have, for argument's sake, uh, Islamic banking. They are all highly specialized areas within the bank. So for us then as an institute to be able to deliver people for those highly skilled areas, we develop the pathways and that assists us and the banks to deliver the right people, the right qualified people for those learning pathways or for those areas within the banks. Well, I think the learning pathways basically covers all the main areas within the bank. So they look at treasury, they look at corporate, they look at uh, risk, they look at governance, they look at Islamic banking, they look at wealth management. Those are among, among them. I think in total there's 12 um, and all those pathways are basically focused at functional levels within a bank. The target audience is quite interesting because I think the Institute went and we identified three different levels of target audience. The first one is the school leaver or, or the university graduate that wants to get into a bank. And they will say that, you know, you've got no skill set per se, but you would like to become a treasury expert. So we will then, the bank will then enroll him into treasury expert and then going through the process of the pathway, he will end up after a quarter or two quarters as a treasury expert. Then we have the concept of the people that need to be reskilled. Those are the people that will be in a job function that's either not going to promote him to a higher level or that is at a dead end street. So we will then take the people or the bank will nominate the person to join one of these um, pathways and that will allow him to reskill into a specialized function. And then we need the people needs to upskill. They have to upskill in a certain, they might be working in corporate compliance. They need to know more about corporate compliance. So they will then join or they will enter into the uh, pathway and then they'll become an expert at corporate compliance. I think currently because of the COVID, it's that the, the most of the online training will be online. Obviously, if things changes, we might look at a mixture of, of online and face-to-face um, -face classes but that is all up in there. So currently it's all online. It's between a quarter and two quarters to finish the, the, the program. And it's all online in any case. The program consists out of two assessments. So there'll be basically two assessments taking place and both these assessments will be on all the work done up to that point in time. Well, the mentorship concept is a very interesting concept because I think if you look at banks these days, because they're highly specialized, they're highly dedicated to people and they need to qualify people and they need to make money, they don't really have the time anymore to spend time with new graduates or people needs to upskill on actually mentoring them. So what EBIF has decided to do is that we will appoint over a period of time up to two mentors per program or per pathway and these two mentors will become a mentor for these students that sits on these pathways and they will advise them, they will assist them, they will help them. Although we also recommend that when we do that, banks appoint from their own side people that will assist these graduates on these pathways to actually learn more and actually be exposed to more of the graduate or more of the product as it goes along. For argument's sake, let me use an example. If we have something like a credit risk expert, he might not want to work, or he doesn't currently work in a credit risk area, but as he joins the pathway, he is exposed to credit risk. We will recommend to the bank that they appoint a credit risk expert for this guy, so he can talk to them, he can lead them, and he can expose them to more of the credit risk, and therefore he can understand the area a lot better. Well, the learning pathways is quite interesting because it gives the bank opportunity to actually provide training without training the people directly. So they can send the people to the IBFS, they can get these people highly specialized in a specific area, and when they're done, they can go back as fully fledged, highly skilled individuals. The trainers will be provided by EIBFS. So currently we have a whole set of trainers and these trainers are qualified on a whole array of um, expertise. They vary from uh, English to corporate governance to risk to treasury to whatever you can think about, EIBFs can provide 
specialist in each of these fields. The facilitator of the program is all permanent employed EIBF staff. They're highly skilled staff. They range from having a minimum degree of MBA to a top degree of a PhD. They skilled, they're each skilled in their subject field and they all are able to, to train and to educate and to lead these, these learners from, the, from their banks through any questions, through any difficulty they might find to be able to qualify at the end of the program. Well, there's, there's probably the best way of doing it is to follow the learning, learning and training division within the banks because the banks will have to nominate these learners to join these programs. Obviously, from ERBF's side, we have distributed all the information to the banks. So when the learners go, they can find out from the learning and training division and they can request to be nominated onto the program.